Fire. <laughs> hey, would everybody please find your seats? And we're going to continue. Welcome back, Jason and China. I don't see China, but I see Jason. Ah, good to see you guys. We missed you. Um, just a short, quick reminder we are going to be back in, in room 10 today, all day until 6 o'clock this evening. And a prayer, everybody, please come for as long as you can make it, as long as you can be there, and join us in prayer. Let's stand as we continue with our service. Yid Gadal, Vayid Kadash, Shimei Rabbah, Ve Olamadi Verachirute, Ve Amalich Machute, Ve Chayechon. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in, in the, the world, world which he hath created according to his will. will. And may he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and, and during, during the, the life, life of, of all the house, house of Israel, Israel, even speedily and at a near time, and say ye Amen. Amen. Let his, Let his great, great name be blessed forever and for all eternity. eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified exalted, extolled, and honored. Magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One, blessed be he, though he be high above all the blessings and hymns, praises and consolations which are uttered in the world. And again, say ye, Amen. Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven, and life for us and for all Israel. And say ye, Amen. Amen. He who, he who makes peace in his high places, places May he make peace for us and for all Israel and say Amen. Everyone, please be seated. Oh, say shalom bim ramav, who ya say shalom aleinu, ve akol Yisrael, ve imru, imru, amen. Oh, say shalom bim ramav, who ya say shalom aleinu, ve akol Yisrael, ve imru, imru, amen. Ya say shalom, ya say shalom, Shalom Aleinu Ve'akol Yisrael Ya'ase Shalom Ya'ase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'akol Yisrael Ya'ase Shalom Ya'ase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'akol Yisrael Ya'ase Shalom 
Yase shalom, shalom aleinu ve'al kolin Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu ve'al kolin Yisrael. Oh, says shalom im ramav. Oh, yase shalom aleinu. Ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru, imru, amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life for us and for all Israel, and say ye, amen. Amen. Michamocha ba'elim Adonai Mi chamocha nedar bakodesh no ratehilot osefele shira chadasha shebechug eolim leshim cha asfat hayom yachad kulam hodu vehim lechu. Ve'amru Adonai imloch le'olam abayed Tzur Yisrael Kum abay ezrat Yisrael Ufedechen umecha Yehuda by Israel, go alenu Adonai tzvaot shemo kadosh Israel, boruch ata Adonai, God Israel. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, mighty in holiness, too awesome for praise, doing wonders? With, With a new song, the redeemed ones praised your name at the seashore. Together they all gave thanks for your kingdom and said, The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Rock of Israel, rise to the aid of Israel and redeem as you spoke, Judah and Israel. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Blessed are, are you, O Lord, Lord Redeemer, Redeemer of, of Israel. Adonai safti tiftach ufia gitehilatecha. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. This is the point in our service where we pray silently. Whatever is on your mind, anything that's troubling you, considering all the things I shared with you this morning, I'm sure you have plenty to pray about. So please take a couple of moments for silent prayer, and then I will close us off verbally in just a couple of moments. Lord, this morning I woke up. Thank you. Thank you for the soft bed I was able to sleep in last night. Thank you for the air-conditioned house. Thank you for the roof that kept the rain off. Thank you for my breakfast this morning. Thank you for my children and my wife who also woke this morning in their soft beds and their breakfast. Thank you for the smiling faces and the hugs and the wonderful people who greeted me this morning. 
Thank you for this synagogue and this place of worship. Thank you for those who serve tirelessly, who got up early to come here to open the building, to teach, to practice, to clean up, to serve. And above all things, thank you for Yeshua. We pray that many would follow him and that we would be worthy of his great name. Teach us to be loving and just and kind and patient and selfless. Give us opportunities to share your great love with other people, humility and with wisdom. For it's in his great name we pray. And all of God's children said, amen. Everyone, please be seated. Yaamod Philippos ben Yosef. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Ben vihim tovim veratza ve divrehem hane emarim be emet baruch atah adonai abocher batorah uva moshe abdo uvi israel amo ubin vie Ha'emet v'atzedek. Blessed is the Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen faithful prophets to speak words of truth. Blessed is the Lord for the revelation of Torah, from Moses his servant and Israel his people, and for the prophets of truth and righteousness. Our reading today is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that I can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Al ha Torah, the Al ha Avodah, the Al ha Nevim, the Al Yom ha Shabbat Hazeh, Shanata Talanu, Adonai Eloheinu, Lik du Shavelim Nucha, Lik Avorutiparet. Al hakol Adonai Eloheinu hanachnu modim lach umavarchim otach it barak shimcha befichochai tamid leolam vayed baruch atah Adonai mekadesh hashabat for the Torah for the privilege of worship for the prophets and for this Shabbat that you, O Lord, have given us for holiness and for rest, for honor and for glory, we thank and bless you. May your name be blessed forever by every living being. 
Blessed is the Lord for the Sabbath and its holiness. Amen. Thank you very much. So I'm, I want you to do a little something with me. In just a minute, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, and then I'm going to say a word. And I want to know what's the first image that pops into your mind associated with that word. Okay, so close your eyes. The word is love. All right, so if you're brave enough to raise your hand and tell me what popped into your mind, I'd be curious to know. Okay, Yeshua, very good. Jesus, nice. In the back. Another one. Wow, you guys are amazing. I'm just, I must be too carnal because first thing that popped into my mind was like a big Valentine's heart. I see another hand in the back. What is it? Family. Family, excellent. What else? Serving others. How about like an image, like a statue? Anybody get a statue? Oh, good. Chocolate cake. Anybody get chocolate cake? Ah, yeah, a couple of chocolate cakes. All right. Anybody get a dog or a cat? Ah, my wife. That didn't surprise me in the least. A Doberman. It's kind of funny. You know, when you think of sweet, cuddly dogs, unless you own one, Doberman never comes to your mind. Unless you own one, Pitbull never comes to your mind. But after you have one, then they do come to your mind. They're sweet dogs. Now, I'm going to be talking about love this morning. You know about love. What, what can I possibly teach you about love? It's not about me educating you so much. I just want to put a picture in your mind. I want you to leave knowing love a little better this morning than you did coming in. So I'm going to draw you a mental picture of what love looks like, which hopefully for the rest of your life it will go with you so that you know love even better than you do now. It's a true story starts in the year 2006, so not that long ago. A young man, a 22-year-old, Lance Corporal, his name is Martin Compton, from Britain, was going to be deployed to Afghanistan to fight. But he met a school teacher, 25-year-old. Her name is uh, Michelle Clifford, and they just fell for each other. Within a few months, they were talking marriage. And then after they got engaged, a couple of weeks later, off to Afghanistan he went. He was deployed. Well, they were driving around, and I guess it was a Humvee, I don't know, and they hit an improvised explosive device, which was made to take those vehicles out. Um, thing blew up, burst into flames. He caught fire. As he was scrambling to get out of the vehicle on fire, he broke his arm, and he got shot. Over 70% of his body was burned by the time they got him out of there, and they rushed him back to London to treat him. As he was being treated between then and London, his heart stopped three times. He ended up in a coma, which I believe lasted three months. Every step of the way, his fiance, who he just met some weeks before they got engaged, really, was there. Let me read to you some statistics about what happened to him. Um, by the way, what I just told you, plus his eyelids, because of the fire, got fused together. He lost his hair, he lost his nose, and he lost his ears. She sat by his bedside nearly every day. Doctors told her he may never wake up. And if he did, he probably wouldn't walk again. While she waited by his bedside, she sang songs to him, or played songs to him, told him stories about his friends and family, and just kept him company. Finally, after three months, he woke up, and the first thing he said was, how are you doing? These two, they just loved each other. For a year, his fiance Michelle, fed him, washed him, brushed his teeth, sat by him as he went through 15 operations to repair the damage that had been done to his body. And after all that, she still set a wedding date. With her support, he finally ended up beating the odds. He walked again. Two years after their engagement, they got married. Michelle got pregnant with twins. 
and then lost them both. A few years later, she got pregnant again, and this time the baby was born healthy and strong. All this between 2006 and 2010, a man and a woman who just knew each other a couple months. So I asked you a question at the beginning of the lesson, what does love look like? It looks like that, and it looks like this. That's a picture of what he looks like now after 15 surgeries. That's their baby, and that's his loving wife. It's a rhetorical question, but I want you to think about it for a minute. Who do you love this much? Phil read to us 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There's another translation that puts it in what is believed to be its original form, that is, poetic. So they took a little liberty, I think, to put it back in that form, but it's beautiful. Let me read it to you. Love is always patient. Love is always kind. Love is never envious or arrogant with pride. Nor is she conceited, and she is never rude. She never thinks just of herself and never gets annoyed. She never is resentful, is never glad with sin. She's always glad to side with truth and pleased that truth will win. She bears up under everything, believes the best in all. There is no limit to her hope and never will she fall. The word love in the English Bible, just in the New Testament, it occurs over 500 times. The first occurrence of the word love is God speaking of Yeshua. This is the son I love at his mikvah. If you were to take a philosophy class or just mess with your friends, you've probably heard this question many times. What's the meaning of life? And that's supposed to be the stumper. Kind of like for the Agnostic, which came first, the chicken or the egg. That's the ultimate stumper for the person who doesn't know the Bible. For the person who knows God, it's not even a, a, a stumper at all. The chicken came first. And God made the chicken, the chicken laid the egg. Not a problem. What's the meaning of life? Well, I think I know the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to learn love. I think that's the meaning of life. To receive God's love to learn love, and to give love. You may disagree with me, but that's what I believe, in part based on this Bible verse. 1 Peter 4.8 says, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Above all, love each other deeply. Above all, What's the meaning of life? Love is the meaning of life. And I suppose we're still here to learn it. I don't want you to raise your hand, but do you think you got it down? After hearing that story, I'm still in kindergarten. So as anxious as I am to get to heaven and move on to phase two, apparently uh, I'm not done with phase one just yet. The meaning of life. Above all, is love. And what we need to learn about love, what we learn, need to learn how to receive it, we need how to receive, learn how to receive love. We need to learn how to give love love in short we just need to be wrapped up in love there are other things that matter but nothing as much as this above all love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins in quoting the Torah Yeshua said this love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind. 
This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. They just hang on them. So three things about love, just real quick. Love is the most important thing, above all. Love is a conscious decision. I learned that because it's a commandment. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart. If we're commanded to do it, it means we're capable, and we can choose whether we do it or not. We can choose whether we love God, and we can choose whether we love others. So love is the greatest thing, and love is a conscious decision that we are commanded to do. And the third thing, love is the cure for the world's ills. That verse I read to you from 1 Peter, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Well, I quoted Peter's version of it, but he was just referencing the Proverbs. There's a couple Proverbs that say that. And so I read a commentary about this, and I really, really liked what it had to say. Very brief, listen, at least the piece I took. The former passage, Proverbs 10, 12, reads, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sin. And the latter passage, Proverbs 17, 9, He that covers transgressions seeks love. In both instances, the reference is to human love, which is to consign to oblivion the sins of others. Love is to consign to oblivion the sins of others. Man, that's powerful. That is huge. You have the authority to consign to oblivion the sins of others. When is the last time you did that? When's the last time that somebody sinned against you and you just consigned it to oblivion, said, don't worry about it, it's forgiven, it's forgotten, it's done. Don't worry about it, we all make mistakes. I love you, I forgive you. You know, Joseph did that. He was engaged to Miriam. She comes up pregnant. He's like, forget it, marriage is off. But the scripture specifically says he being just a just man didn't want to make a public example of her so he divorced wanted to divorce her quietly privately just man didn't want to make a public thing of it just okay don't worry about it obviously we can't get married you're already pregnant just have a nice life of course you know the rest of the story the angel came and said no it's not like that joseph god breathed life into her womb she's going to bear the messiah so he married her. God desires to consign your sins to oblivion. You have the power to do it. He has the power to do it. But will you let him? You also have the power to stop him from consigning your sins to oblivion. Micah seven nineteen, He will again have compassion on us, speaking to Israel and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast our sins into the depth of the sea. Our sins will be cast into oblivion. When we forgive people, we're acting like God. Think on that for a second. You're like God when you forgive people. You're not like God when you judge people. You're not like God when you're holier than thou. You're not like God in your power or might. The way you can be like God is in your love. That's how you can be like God. I'm sure that's not what the serpent had in mind when he told Adam and Eve, oh, eat from the tree because then you will be like God, knowing good from evil. God doesn't want us to know from evil. God just wants us to know from good. To consign to oblivion, the sins of others. And here's why it's so important. Because I will sin against you if you know me well and for any length of time. I can't help it. I'm a human. And you will sin against me if I know you for any length of time. You can't help it. You're a, sin, a, a human. If I don't forgive you your sins, 
we can't have a relationship. And if you don't forgive me mine, the same. But if you'll forgive me my sins, we can have a great relationship and vice versa. And it only makes sense because we're going to do it to each other anyway. Might as well just consign it to oblivion. Listen to what 1 John says. We are of God. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So, it's been about 15 minutes. I've told you everything I want to say. I'm not going to drag it out. But I want to show you a video before I let you go. So let me ask you to please bring up that video and let's take a look. We end tonight with, we end tonight with one of the most potent powers on earth. It can change lives in an instant. Everyone has it. It's the power to forgive. Watch it now in action in Steve Hartman's Assignment America. Thank you, Lord. In a small apartment building in North Minneapolis, a 59-year-old teacher's aide sings praise to God for no seemingly apparent reason. Indeed, if anyone was to have issues with the Lord, it would be Mary Johnson. For all you've done for me. He never had a chance. In February 1993, Mary's son, Loramian Bird, was shot to death during an argument at a party. He was 20 and Mary's only child. My son was gone. The killer was a 16-year-old kid named O'Shea Israel. I wanted justice. He was an animal. He deserved to be caged. And he was. Tried as an adult and sentenced to 25 and a half years, O'Shea served 17 before being recently released. He now lives back in the old neighborhood, close to Mary. This close. He lives next door. Next door. How a convicted murderer ended up living a door jam away from his victim's mother is a story not of horrible misfortune, as you might expect, but of remarkable mercy. A few years ago, Mary asked if she could meet O'Shea here at Minnesota's Stillwater State Prison. As a devout Christian, she felt compelled to see if there was some way, if somehow she could forgive her son's killer. What'd she say to you? I believe the first thing she said was, look, you don't know me, I don't know you, let's just start with right now. And I was befuddled myself. O'Shea says they met regularly after that. When he got out, she introduced him to her landlord, who, with Mary's blessing, invited O'Shea to move into the building. Today, they don't just live close, they are close. Clearly, Mary was able to forgive. Unforgiveness is like cancer. It will eat you from the inside out. It's not about that other person. Me forgiving him does not diminish what he's done. Yes, he murdered my son, but the forgiveness is for me. It's for me. For O'Shea, it hasn't been that easy. I haven't totally forgiven myself yet. I'm learning how to forgive myself, and I'm still growing towards, you know, trying to forgive myself and what it is I've done. To that end, O'Shea is now busy proving himself to himself. He works at a recycling plant by day and goes to college by night. He says he's determined to pay back Mary's clemency by contributing to society. In fact, he's already working on it, singing the praises of God and forgiveness at prisons, churches, to large audiences everywhere. Forgiveness is a powerful thing. Yes, I'm grateful. Which explains why Mary can sing her praise of thanks to her audience so of one. Steve Hartman, yes, CBS News, Minneapolis. For all you've done for now you know what love is. Please join me in prayer. Oh, Lord. Wow. Thank you for these amazing examples of love. We want to grow in love. We pray that you'd give us a little taste of what true love is and help us to grow in it. For it's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. You know, 
The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Starting to understand by looking at human examples from today about what that love entails. I don't know, maybe your heart is different than mine, maybe your mind is different than mine. But it's hard for me to personalize what Yeshua did for me. I know what he did for the world, and I'm part of the world. But it's hard for me to, to get past the story down to the real person who hung on the cross in agony, willingly, to save me. But when I see a story like this, I begin to understand just a little bit more. So here we are at that time of month where we do something symbolic to remember Yeshua's sacrifice for our sin. We drink a little grape juice or wine, and we eat a little piece of matzah. As you know, the grape juice represents the blood that Yeshua poured out on our behalf. He died for our sins. And the broken matzah, his body was, was broken for us. We do this to remember him. The scriptures, though, are very clear. This is only to be done by people who follow Yeshua. So if you're with us today and you've not made a decision to follow Yeshua, uh, please just wait. We'll be done in a couple of moments. If, however, you have made that decision, there's still further guidelines for us. Um, we all sin. We repent of our sin. We ask Yeshua to forgive us, to come into our lives, and to lead us. And we promise to follow him for the rest of our days. But sometimes we slip back into sin. We're not supposed to take communion if we're mired in sin. And so what I'm going to do now is give you a couple of moments to pray. If there's something in your life that you know isn't right with you and God, ask him to forgive you, repent of it, and then come up and take communion. However, if you're just not, your heart isn't in it, then just wait for us to finish. It's not right for you to take communion if you're not right before God. So I'm going to leave this available. We have three stations. You come up when you feel ready. And in the meantime, the team will, will lead us in singing. Nisa umuram Yoshe berosh kate Chayai Anira et Adonai Nisa umuram Yoshe berosh kate Chayai Beata ka Seated on the throne, the 
Señor, alto y sublime, sentado sobre el trono de mi ser. Te veo, Señor, alto y sublime, sentado sobre el trono de mi ser. Y eres sobre el trono de mi ser y eres santo eres santo eres santo sentado sobre el trono de mi You stand with me. <clears throat> we praise you, Lord. be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. And Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away. the power of your love. Hold me close. Let your love surround me. Say bring me near. Draw me to your side.
your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Lord, unveil my eyes, let me see you face to face the knowledge of your love as you live in me. And Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life, in living every day. By the power of your love, Spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround me, bring me near, draw me to your side. Spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround me, bring me near, draw me to your side. soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. And I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Left us breathless. Thank you. If you're visiting with us, we want to welcome you to our congregation to remind you uh, that um, we have a visitor packet and a gift we'd like to give you. If you go out to the lobby through the grassy area to room three is our bistro. We'll have some folks over there to, to greet you, to, to give you a gift, and maybe answer any questions you might have about our synagogue. I hope you have an amazing day. May the love of Messiah pour through you. May he use you as a conduit for his love. Please bow your heads for the ironic benediction and you'll be dismissed. Yivarecha charunai v'yishmarecha Ya'er Adonai panavalecha v'chunecha Ye Sadonai, part of a lecho, you say him lecho, shalom. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. God bless you hard. You're dismissed. There shall be a highway in the desert For the redeemed of the Lord 
And from the mouth of the Lord of hosts. 